So, welcome back, welcome back. Part two of this headlight ordeal. Yeah, things were going smooth, you know, getting the factory lights out and everything. Uh, I did watch some videos on people doing the fixed lights. Seemed pretty easy, uh, just having to go from underneath the car. There's some things that happened that shouldn't happen, but they did. Uh, one of the main things is these harnesses that come on these lights are definitely lot, not long enough to reach the factory harness. So I had to cut that. I did extend it by about five inches. A little bit much, but I was able to run it underneath the headlight right here and then plug it up. And then I'll put some wire loom on this and you know, tuck it up pretty nice and neat, but the passenger side is in. All right, few key things. This one bracket on the back, go ahead and mount it, leave it sort of loose. Reason being, when you set the light in here, you need something to kind of set it on so it don't just fall in there. Now, if you have somebody with you, which it definitely would be easier to put these lights in with two people. But if you have somebody with you, then go ahead and bolt this up to the light and you can get it in here and there's enough room to kind of slide it onto that bolt that's right there and you know just stick your little 10 millimeter nut on it and you can go get all that from the bottom you got to access this bottom plate about five bolts holding it in and you can get up through there i actually moved my air duct out of the way on that side so i can look through this area here and I could go up through the bottom, laying on the floor, go up through the bottom, but look through this hole. And you can see your 13s that go in here. And you can see to get to these Phillips heads that go into here. Which wasn't bad because with that access panel, you could literally go straight up with a Phillips head and get those in there. Just pre-mount this to the light and then take it back off if you do that. Uh, if you're going to do it by yourself, just do that. That way the holes are not so tight. You know, normally we want a tight hole, but in this case, we don't want that tight. We want that kind of loosey-loosey. So it just goes in a little bit easier. And then once you get the light adjusted, you know, once you move it and get it adjusted and lined up to the car, then, you know, you can tighten this up. I had these all the way up. Now that I've got that one done, hopefully it'll match, I can drop this one down. So to help the light line up just a little bit easier for me next time, instead of having to get up and down to kind of see where I'm lined up. Originally, I had all this taped up because putting the light in, you know, it is pretty close. And it's a pretty good fitment. It's not bad. There's a little bit of gap there. And, you know, you could shimmy some of this around and, you know, even out the gaps. There's a little bit here with the hood shut. I'm not gonna shut it all the way because I gotta lift it right back up. The hood shut, you know, my seam is pretty even all the way around, which, you know, looks fine because it is even. They actually look pretty good on the car. You know, like I said earlier, a lot of people, they, they talk about wanting to tint this or vinyl wrap it because it's a little bit too much. But I'm kind of with everybody else. Once you get them in the car, they really don't look that bad. With these being projectors, I kind of took it for granted and I didn't change the bulbs to LEDs that I normally run in all my cars. The bright light won't be bad to change, but I really can't see getting to that low beam bulb right there without loosening the light and lifting it up some, which would be a pain in the ass because then you got to reline it back up. So... If you are going to change the bulbs, I suggest you pre-do that before you put them in the car because this is how they look. Factory. I know they look a little white on camera, but they do have a yellowish tint. You can see there, they, they have a yellowish tint to them. So, you know, it depends on your preference of lights. Personally, I prefer the white lights. So, yeah, if you're gonna put LEDs in it, I suggest you pre-do that before installing the light 
definitely make your life a lot easier. So, had to extend the harness because it definitely wouldn't reach the factory. I even, I tried to pull as much as I could. This one came just a little bit. That one over there wouldn't move at all. So, you know, it's just not enough here on these to reach the, the new lights going in. So I just had to extend the harness, wasn't a big deal, three wires, and just set it in here and run your Phillips heads up. And then you got your 13s here and just get the light adjusted and just tighten everything up. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Just a couple little things, you know, having to extend the harness, having to try to get this light level by myself and everything. It's doable. I mean, you know, it's not impossible, but having a partner over would definitely help, you know, that way they can hold it and help keep it lined up while you go underneath and sort of tighten it up. So, yeah, it's a little awkward getting your arm up in there to, you know, to tighten these up or get them started, should I say. Once they were in there, I was able to, you know, get my, my ratchet on it with an extension and it went pretty quick. So, it's not too bad of a job, you know, just having to jack up the car, take off that bottom plate, going from underneath. Uh, so, yeah, not too bad. So there's that light, and I'm going to go ahead and extend the harness on this one and go ahead and get it dropped in there and see if I can get it lined up because I really hated having the lights out of the car. Even though I'm not ready to drive the car yet, still doing other things, I really hated not having lights in the car because it literally made the car inoperable. So if I did need or want to drive it, I absolutely couldn't. So it makes me feel a little bit better that the lights are coming along and I can get them in there and uh, you know, at least I can drive the car if I, if I need or want to. So there's that, uh, you know, wish I could do a little bit of hands-on filming while I put the lights in, but really not a lot to film. Once you get the light dropped in, you really can't see any of those bolts from underneath. That's why I kind of just tried to show where they were and sort of the process of what to do. So, Shouldn't be too bad of a task. Yeah, there they are. So let me get this other light dropped in. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, the people that's viewed the content so far. Like I said, I know I haven't posted videos in a long, long, long time. And this is a definitely a lot different video than what I've been doing. But, you know, I picked up the cars pretty nice. I figured I would just do a little bit of video because I knew I had a lot of things I was doing to the car. You know, Maybe people would enjoy how it's coming along and you know, the, the finished product. Built a lot of cars over the years. You know, never really took the time to make any content on them. It's sort of just one of those things like, ah, you know, let me just go ahead and build the car and just drive it. Then you get done, you're like, you know, man, I should have did a couple videos. I should have took some pictures along the way, especially my, my low rider. I mean, it, you know, full painted underneath, full chrome suspension, hydraulics, you know, it, a lot of engraving work, you know, I'll do a walk around video of that car uh, pretty soon. Man, it's raining hard. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody so far. And, you know, I'll try to just keep up with the videos. I mean, you know, just keep people along. And when I get done with a Corvette, you know, I'll do some videos on my, my lowrider Cadillac and you know, I got a couple other things I can do some videos and stuff on. You know, I'll try not to talk as much, make them as lengthy, you know, just, yeah. But I appreciate everybody. And, you know, been getting a lot of messages and stuff so far. You know, people telling me certain things, some good, some bad. You know, a lot of people's, you know, complaining about the fixed headlights and, you know, changing the wheels and stuff like that, even though I haven't really done a good video about the wheels or the whole car in general anyways. It's actually still sitting with some tension on the springs it hasn't settled just sitting here so i've got about a four inch gap in between my my tires and my fenders which really sucks i hate that i hate that around here um looking at some videos you know of course you know people lowering them with the factory bolts and everything some people are having good luck getting maybe an inch out of it some people got a quarter inch out of the front and maybe a half inch out of the back that's really not gonna do it for me, so I went ahead and ordered the VMS lowering kit. People seem to be having decent luck out of that, getting a little bit more, maybe an inch and a half in the front, an inch in the back. So, you know, I'll see how that goes. Um, really don't wanna order coilovers. 
got other things I'd rather spend money on. But I mean, once you get to a point where you're changing out wheels and stuff on a car and you want it to sit a certain way, you know, it's, it's it kind of reaches the point like, you know, you'll kind of do whatever you want to do or what you need to do to get the look that you have envisioned or that you're you're shooting for. And you know, with the car not sitting sitting right on the, the top of the tire or whatever, you know, not directly on the tire, but right down at it. it. Makes the tires look too little for the car. The fitment don't look right. So, you know, I want the car to look good. You know, I'm spending a lot of time on this thing, spending a little bit of money on it. So, you know, I want the car to look look nice and I want it to be right. Really don't want to buy the springs, but like I said, if it comes down to it, I'll just do what I got to do, I guess. So, uh, yeah, again, I appreciate everybody, you know, positive or negative. You know, I appreciate all the comments, feedback, you know, whatever. You know, I'm, there's things people do that everybody don't like, you know, and I get it. There's people that's totally against the fixed headlights. I like the flip-up lights. The flip-up lights are cool. I worry about the reliability side of it. You know, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the, the top being manual. You know, of course, it's nice to be sitting in a car and you flip the button and the top goes down. That's nice. Anybody likes that. Nobody wants to have to stop and get out and put the top down. But I look at it realistically, that's less to go wrong, especially a car that's 24 years old. You know, changing out convertible top motors, you know, stuff can just go bad. So with the flip-up lights, they're cool. I like the way it looks. I like the sleek look. These aren't frog-eyed that much. I think I'll be happy with these. But I know for a fact these are going to work. You know, I don't have to worry about flipping that switch and one of them not popping up. And a few times I've driven the car, I thought about that every single time. The main reason, because the driver's side would come up. You know, they, would, they wouldn't come up even. Driver's side come up, then all of a sudden the passenger side pops up. You know, stuff like that I think about, like, Man, what if they don't pop up one time? I'm going to be riding around looking like Forrest Whitaker. You know, nobody wants that. So the fixed lights, they definitely going to work, less they can mess up. And I think they look cool, you know, especially after I, you know, I'll change them out some LEDs. That'll definitely look a lot better. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody.